So now welcome Gautam, um, who is a new contributor. Um, he started noticing Prometheus when Fabian built the new uh, TSDB for Prometheus 2 and like in record speed learned how it all works and is already you know, improving it in various ways. And he's going to now tell you how to use the TSDB package outside of Prometheus for other purposes. Hello, uh, hi, I'm Gautam. I'm currently a bachelor student at IIT Hyderabad. Until exactly 10 days back, I was an intern with CoreOS where I got to work on the 2.0 engine with Fabian. So I have a question. How many of you here are students? Wow, okay, nice. Uh, so yeah, TSDB. So this is the TSDB repo and this is Prometheus 2.0 storage engine. And it's actually a library rendered by Prometheus. Uh, this was a conscious design decision which means you guys can embed it in your Golang applications. But why would you want to do that? Uh, I think time series is everywhere, and I think this is a very nice API to do, deal with large data sets. For example, take weather data. All of weather data is just time series, and you probably want to do correlation and a lot of other data science stuff, and you might be like, oh, I have big data. I need a Hadoop cluster. But uh, from Fabian's talk, we know that uh, we can compress 1 billion points into one point, just one point to GB. So I don't think your big data is that big if you use TSDB. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways. <laughs> anyways, uh, so I'm going to take you through. So uh, some people launch products at a conference. I'm launching a startup. Uh, I'm going to take you through a crazy startup idea. Uh, Prometheus with push. So how many of you, when you initially configured Prometheus, thought, why does Prometheus need to discover my services? Why can't I just push data? Oh my god, service discovery, reliable conflicts, how many of you felt that? Oops. How many of you were stupid enough to write an aggregator where you can push your data? I, I did that. <laughs> anyways, anyways, uh, we get a lot of requests for this. At least I, when I was uh, looking into it, there were some requests. So Prometheus has a lot of users. If I capture 5% of those users, I have a multi-million dollar startup. Introducing Promflux. So <laughs> you, you, you ingest Influx line protocol, which means all your client libraries are there. And you query using PromQL, which we all know how cool it is. And I'm not joking, I even made a logo. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I even have promflux.io. So, <laughs> so, no. That is not how Prometheus works. And I, I spent, I mean, it's been a long time since I touched a pro production Prometheus. So all these stunts are being pro done by an amateur. Don't do it in production. But the real reason I'm not doing it, the money doesn't interest me, is because this is the Brian I know. And if I do this, this is the Brian I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, life is short. Brian Brazil, never heard of him. Let's do this. <laughs> so some basics uh, from Fabian's talk. We know what a time series is. A time series is basically a bunch of values, each marked by time. Like weather in Berlin, weather in Munich. So 5 o'clock, it's 10, uh, 10 degrees. 5.15, it's 20 degrees, so on. And you can have several hundred thousand of time series, like weather in Berlin, weather in Munich, weather in Hyderabad, uh, the rain, the humidity, a bunch of time series. And this is how it looks inside Prometheus. And But Prometheus essentially maps it to a bunch of label value pairs. And it has this magic label name called underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. TSDB doesn't have that. TSDB just has label value pairs. And there's literally no mag magic involved here, so even this is a valid series inside TSDB. Yep, so if, uh, now that I'm building Promflux on top of TSDB, so this is a Prometheus metric, and this is a Promflux metric. So, and uh, this is how you select in, uh, in Prometheus, so you give the na name. This essentially transforms to you adding a name key value pair and then selecting on the name, just some, some basics. So if you want to actually select by name and a selector, you pass the name and the selector. Yep, so this is simplified line protocol. You have a name and a bunch of key value pairs and then the value field, which essentially maps to this inside Promflux or TSDB. Now let's get to the code. I hope this works. 
yeah this is the initial comment hello world okay can you see this now can you see this yeah okay sorry about that yep so hello world yeah uh, i'm not really launching my startup it's secret but let's build it uh yep wrong clicker oops sorry need to fix this yep so i'm going to structure it into three parts creation of the database inserting data into the database and how you can query the database the creation part so this is how the api looks like so you have the open function which gives you the db object and you pass the data directory which you want to create or is already there the logger we are good people we pass an ex uh, explicit logger and the prometheus registry where you want to register your metrics and the options so from fabian's talk we heard that we use a right ahead log how frequently do we want to flush that right, right ahead log so if it's 10 seconds you flush the right ahead log every 10 seconds which means you can lose 10 seconds of data if you set it to zero you always flush before you say the write is successful the retention duration the same prometheus retention duration how long do you want your data to be there and we know uh, that we now from fabian stock we know we compact the blocks what sizes of the blocks do we want so back to code scripts create uh, can you guys see this yep so thdb.open we pass the data path we pass a very simple logger. We just log to send it out. We pass a new Prometheus registry and the options. So the, we want to flush every 10 seconds, which is the default in Prometheus. We want to store 15 days of data in milliseconds. And then uh, we want two R blocks then that have to be compacted to six R blocks, 24 hours and 72 hours. You don't need to explicitly mention this. We have a helper for this. And then you don't definitely panic. <laughs> you handle the error. But back to the presentation, inserting data. So insertion works like this. So you, you call an appender and you add all your data. So basically you add series. It's like, suppose if Prometheus scrapes, it says series one timestamp and value. So you just add one by one and then you call commit. So essentially, uh, oh, one more caveat is here, uh, the samples of each uh, series need to be ordered, which means you can add 10, 15, 20, but not 12, but you can add uh, out of order in another series. Like series two should have, greater than 10 next time you add it. So yeah, you sh it has to be ordered, which is why I'm not happy with Tom removing uh, ordering in uh, remote storage. But anyways, uh, this is how it works. So we have our data and then we create our appender. We slowly add one by one all our metrics and then once we call commit, this gets added. Notice there are two steps. This is not atomic and Brian will be talking about it. And boom, we have our data inside TSDB. Uh, before we jump into the code, some utilities. Uh, so I wrote a function that converts line to matrix, and a matrix metric is again uh, all the labels and the timestamp and the value. And now, code. Uh, so we have the same thing, but we have an insert handler here. Now, what does the insert handler do? It reads the body. It converts the line uh, matrix to the TSDB matrix. And this is the add logic. So we have we create an appender. We add all the data to that appender. And finally, we call commit. You might see that there's also an add fast function here. So how uh, TSDB does add is, so when you pass in all the labels, it does a hash of it. It gets the series ID. It goes to the series ID and then adds data. Now this is uh, computationally intensive. You're hashing every series. If you add, if you add like millions of samples, you have to hash millions of times a second, and that can be avoided if you can somehow cache it. And this is how kind of Prometheus uh, 2.0 reduced its CPU by having a cache. Uh, Instead of just passing the series, you pass the reference. And how do you get the reference? You pass the series the first time. Then you store the reference. And OK. Uh, now you insert a data. Now it comes the best part. How do we query using PromQL? So first, we have a bunch of series. And we have a PromQL expression. But what is a PromQL expression? expression? It's a label name and a constraint on the label value. How do we actually put it into code? Uh, we have so basically we have like we need an equal matcher or a, reg a regular expression matcher prefix matcher. How do we actually uh, express this? 
we use Golang interfaces. So we have a matcher interface that returns the label name and if the label value matches a, a certain constraint. So if you actually give this to the database, it is the database job's job to give you all the series that uh, satisfy this matcher. For example, the equal matcher. Name equal to Prometheus, you just create an equal matcher and it will actually give you all the series uh, that uh, have name which is Prometheus, the regular expression matcher, name from dot star. So these are just examples of matcher, but the essential thing is you have a bunch of matches and you pass it down to the database in this format, all the matches that you want to satisfy and you get a series set. Going back, we have a bunch of series. How do we read them? As I said, you might have a billion points, you might have 10 billion points, which means essentially your query could get, return you gigabytes of data. You don't want to read all of it into memory and then give it to the reader. So you want to do it iteratively, like read all the data of series one, then read all the data of series two and so on. But series one in itself can have hundreds of MBs of data. You don't want to read all of that into memory either. So you want to also iterate through the values. So essentially this is what you want to do. Go to series one, iterate through the values and so on. So this is what the code is going to look like, slightly involved. Uh, so you call the querier function with the min time and max time. You don't want to query all of history, you just want to create query from min time and max time. And then you pass down all the matchers and you get a series set. What is a series set? A series set is next, at and error. This is the iterator pattern. So at will give you the current series, the first one, and next will move you to the next series. And the moment next return false, you're at the end of your series. Uh, then uh, what is a series? A series is the labels and the iterator you use to read the values. An iterator again looks like the same. Uh, there's at and there's a next. And so when you call at, you get the current uh, timestamp and value. And when you call next, you move to the next value. So on until you reach the end, until next returns false. A couple more utilities, promql to matches, you give the promql expression and then you get the matcher out. And then we are going to return all the points that match the uh, query, which is, which is a series of series, or which is a slice of series. And series is again labels and points. So the final code. Oops. Uh, Yep, you have your database and then you have the insert query, the insert handler and now you have the query handler. Let's look at how the query handler looks like. Yep, so before that, this is how a query will come like. We are actually accepting post, post data, which is like you ask, you send the promql, the min time and max time. Uh, response is a bunch of series and series are just labels and points. So you essentially decode the query, you get uh, you get the query object from the post body. And now here comes the code. So you want to have all the match series. You create your querier. You get your matches and then you call select and get your series set. Now for each series, for each series in the series set, you get the current series, you get its labels and you get all the points from the iterator and then add it to the match series. And finally, you return the series. Any questions until here? Okay, did I lose you guys? Oops. Okay. Uh, sorry for the bunch of code. Uh, anyways, uh, so basically, it's quite simple. Uh, so uh, this is in three parts. Again, the creation of the database, which is pretty easy. Inserting data, you create an appender, you add all the data and you create, you say commit. And querying is you get the series set and then go through each series and get all the values. And now for the demo, I'm deleting the data directory to get create a new directory. And yeah, so this is, uh, the line protocol data and you send a post request, you just push the data to Prometheus and it will, I mean prompt flux and it will return success. And then you do your prompt QL query, which says I want all the uh, values which match name equal to weather and min, t min time and max time is basically essentially infinity and you get all your series. Okay, all your series and each series. So I inserted four series, so there should be four the answer. So. 
tips. Anyways, uh, this is a simple query. Now we want to use the full uh, regex matching. So you can essentially ask for everything that matches location that looks like US mid dot star. Uh, Sorry. Yep, so there are two series that match it and all the values that match it. I think I am quite early. Oops. Uh, but any questions here? Anywhere that I lost you guys that I can go back to because I have enough time? <laughs> yep. Please uh, show the code. Thanks. So uh, please show the code when uh, you calculate ranges. So we saw min and max mm -hmm. and how the code looks like when you use these uh, parameters. Oh, so it's quite simple. So when you create the query here, you actually pass in the min time and max time. Ah, so it's built in here. Yeah, you actually uh, don't do any of the merging. The database internally does the merging for you. Hmm? Any other questions? <laughs> Is your example code uh, online somewhere so we can use that for? I'll push it along with my slides. That would be awesome. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, yep. um, thank you for the talk. Very interesting. Uh, how when I when I integrate TSDB, what are the requirements when I want to close it cleanly and then exit? specific um, things I need to do? Uh, so, okay, a good question. Uh, basically, you just need to exit uh, because you have a write ahead log. If you don't want to lose any data, you, you put the write ahead log uh, flush interval to zero. You won't lose anything. But if you actually exit in the middle, you panic or somehow, you still lose the 10, 10 seconds of data, but that's the max you lose. So all the blocks are uh, like, all the persistent blocks are never modified and the val is just append only, and if there's some, there's some corruption, we actually truncate the rest of the values, so you, your data is safe. So cool. you can exit happily. Hello, so uh, what exactly the database? So can you have multiple databases also? Uh, so no, so it's actually one database, and you put all your series in it, and it doesn't really matter for you to shard the databases because you can get arbitrary, arbitrarily wide in one like uh, in one database, but if you actually want to do it, just pass in another folder. Those will be two independent databases. So you mean here, the folder is actually a database? Yes, the folder will have all the uh, all the data for that database. But at, at any at any moment or at runtime, only it supports single database, right? You can create two DB objects for the two different folders. Okay. And then you, you insert into whichever you want. That's fine, but whenever I'm querying the data, I will not say which database, right? So. Uh, yep. So there's no way you can join the data. So these are two independent databases. That's fine. Still, my question is, mm -hmm. while querying, I cannot specify the database. I always talk to the default database, yes. right? So what what the rationale in that case to have two folder or having two databases? Yeah. I mean, uh, so you if you want to have multiple users and you don't want to mix their data, you can have two databases for each user. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And uh, whatever uh, the database you created, so it supports HTTP interface or we need to code, like the code which you demonstrated, uh, uh, you actually uh, yes. adding a REST layer or a better to say a HTTP layer. Yes. On top of that, you are adding a controllers, right? Yes. So whenever we deploy this, so we need to deploy this code or whenever okay. we... Yep. So the use case for this is, so you have some application and you want to actually uh, write and read uh, time series data. So you use this to write and read, but you deploy your application. Here, Promflux is the example application, just don't deploy it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Hi, um, a question about the API that we see now on, on the screen. Yes. Is it something specific to your TSDB layer, or is it the same API that Prometheus uses internally? Yes, this is the same, this is the TSDB API layer which Prometheus uses. So Prometheus vendors TSDB and then uses this. Okay, thank you. Yep. Hi. Thank you. Ah, okay. uh, is it possible to resolve uh, labels into low-level uh, serious IDs and use that IDs to select data? Because I think uh, resolving labels, it's quite 
quite expensive. Good question, but uh, oops. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, so the thing is, uh, you actually want to have uh, the series IDs exposed so that you can query faster. Yes. But uh, if you actually look at PromQL or the use case, uh, you actually pass the matches. If you already, so somehow you will, on the, on the client side, you'll maintain the mapping. Uh, that is not currently exposed, and I don't think that will be exposed as the API. But what if I want to build some analytics? Maybe it's not quite a good uh, example for this, but um, I want uh, to resolve all my uh, time series, and mm -hmm. I just want to uh, pick that uh, data up uh, quite uh, frequently, for example. Yep, I get it. Uh... Yeah, the, the, there could be a direct fast path uh, access, which could be enabled, but I'm not sure it will be. Okay, thank you. And what about uh, backups? Ah, so... Uh, Can I at atomically backup all database uh, or take a snapshot? Yes, so the, uh, there is another function that I did not cover in this talk. So Prometheus uses that. So Prometheus 2.0 beta 2 has an API endpoint which you hit and that actually calls db.snapshot and that snapshot is out to a directory. So okay. the functionality is there. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, well, thank you very much, Kanto. Thank you.